Okay, I see it's recording. Thank you. So good evening and welcome everyone. I'm Marianne Bazil. That's Marianne without the E. So the other Marianne, um, we're very similar in our names. Um, and I'm co-president uh, at this time for Midday Women's Alliance. Uh, and yes, we do events other than midday, as you can see. Here we are in the evening and we do events in the evening also. So as I think all of you know, and I'll just refresh your memory if, if you don't, we're, we're nonprofit, we're nonpartisan, we're an organization that's committed to supporting its members and other women in the Fox Cities. Um, and our, our members and those that we touch come from a wide variety of backgrounds. We have business owners, we have professionals, we have executives, we have retirees, we have entry level employees and community enthusiasts, avid volunteers and everything in between. So our mission is that we're organized to de develop the potential of all women. And we do this, take the word names, we do this through networking, advocacy, mentoring, education, and skill building. And this evening, we're hitting on several of those tenets, thanks to Irene and, and 9 to 5. So I would also like to add that uh, we are, and I, it's been uh, much more vivid for me recently, we are connectors. I mean, during this whole COVID-19, I'm finding that our organization is connecting dots for people, for individuals, for women, for other people. We're also connecting women to other women and saying, oh, you need this. You're doing at-home uh, education. We know somebody that can help with, with this piece. So we, we've been great connectors through this, this challenging time. So we are honored to have 9 to 5 at Wisconsin present on COVID-19 and the paid sick leave and family medical leave. We've uh, worked with 9 to 5 in the past. Several of us are members of 9 to 5. Um, 9 to 5 has presented to our organization at, at a program. So we've partnered with them in uh, several different ways. Um, so we, before I turn this over to Irene, who is our project manager for this 9 to 5 project, I'd like to give a shout out to other webinar participants who are on representing organizations. So besides 9 to 5 uh, uh, Midday Women, we have League of Women Voters, and I think that would be you, Shirley, right? Anybody else from League of Women on? And we also have Keeping Families First Coalition. Um, who, who's on? Anybody on from Keeping Families First? Uh, she may be coming on. So well, <clears throat> thank bon, you bon, very Bonnie, much for Bonnie is Bonnie is one of the coalition members and okay. nine to five leads it. So. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Thank you. So I'm going to now turn this over to Irene Strobing, but I'm not just going to turn it over. I have to tell you, Irene wears certainly multiple hats, many hats. Let's just be honest, many hats with us with, with Midday as well as in this community and in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, she's been past president for our organization. She serves as an advocate for women in many arenas throughout the state. Uh, and uh, she, we've been friends for a long time. She's the person that really got me into Midday Women's. So I am pleased to induce our, introduce our friend, our colleague, and your host for the evening, Irene Strobing. Oh, thank you, Marianne. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but thank you. That was very nice. Um, so I've been looking forward to this event for several weeks. It, you know, we kind of scheduled it just a few weeks ago, but um, it's a real pleasure because I am representative of 9 to 5, as well as representative of Midday Women's Alliance here. Um, and uh, so I'm going to keep this very short because we want to get on to the, the gist of our program tonight. Um, but it's my pleasure to introduce to everyone our two speakers. Um, we'll be starting off hearing from uh, Marianne Bellasorte, who is a National Implementation Director for Family Values at Work. And I'm sure Marianne will um, introduce what that organization is. But it uh, very quickly, it is um, a na nationwide organization coalition that's been working for paid sick days, um, paid family and medical leave, and other family-friendly policies. So they're very important to the cause. Um, Marianne herself has been working 
for um, 13 years advocating for these kinds of policies that also include um, fair work weeks, um, ensuring that workers have fair advance notice for when they need to go to work, um, pay equity, rights for domestic workers. Um, and uh, the great thing is Marianne's been successful in winning some of these policies in specific states. Um, uh, and our, our second speaker will be Truth Freeman. Um, Truth is our primary contact at nine to five. She is leadership development and training manager um, and has had a five year stint at nine to five in addition um, with the title of National Workplace Anti-Discrimination Project Director. So that uh, sounds like very important work also. Um, I've gotten to know Truth a little bit more in the last week or two, and uh, she's an awesome facilitator. Um, I can understand why uh, she's such a good training manager. Truth is also an entrepreneur. She's a consultant, mm -hmm. and she has co-founded Truth, Truth Freeman Institute, as well as Wisdom Network Presents. Mm -hmm. So if we have time, maybe you can ask Truth about some of those experiences, mm -hmm. too. But um, with that, I'm going to turn the um, podium, if you will, our virtual floor, over to Marianne <laughs> to talk about what's going on um, on a national level. Thank you, Marianne and Truth, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. I'm so excited to be here. So uh, while I've been working in this particular field for 13 years, uh, about 20 years ago, I got my first job out of college, and it was with 9 to 5 in Atlanta. Um, but I got to know Linda from back then, and Truth and I were talking. We might have run into each other at some point. So. I'm always just so happy when I get a chance to do anything with nine to five again. Um, I'm really excited to be here tonight. So give me one moment just to share my screen. I think I have it set up to work quickly. Um, okay, hopefully you can see this screen. It should say COVID-19, paid leave and unemployment. Um, so I'll try to go through these slides briefly. I do wanna say that if you have a message that you wanna to send to me directly, the best way to do it is to message the profile that's called Marianne's Computer. Um, I have to be on here twice because of technical reasons. So um, that's the one that I'll actually be able to type on and respond to. So I wanted to start off just by mentioning a little bit more about my organization, Family Values at Work. Um, family Values at Work grew out of the recognition that valuing caregiving and helping people to be good providers and good family members is key to achieving racial, gender, and economic equity. We are a network of 27 coalitions across the country working on paid sick days and paid family leave, among other issues. Um, in addition to my work at Family Values at Work, I've also been running our Pennsylvania coalition uh, for the past 13 years. And that's where I was able to work on um, paid sick days, paid family leave, and other topics. As my, part of my job at Family Values at Work, um, especially over the past few months, I've been putting together a lot of materials, including this chart that I know is really hard for you to see. Um, and this is kind of the basis of my presentation. So I wanted you to see it up front to know that, that there is a reason why I'm talking about what I'm talking about. Um, we did this with NELP, another national organization. You can find this and other materials at our website, familyvaluesatwork.org slash rights. I'll be sending this to you all after the presentation. And this chart is what I'm going to kind of use to kind of walk you through what's happened at the federal level, specifically around paid leave, but also a little bit around unemployment. So um, for those of us who are still employed and on the job, but who need paid time from work due to COVID, um, there have been some changes made at the federal level. For the first time ever, we have access to federal paid sick days. Um, this is not something that's ever passed there, although uh, it has passed in cities and states across the country. And these days are available to use if you have a medical diagnosis of COVID-19 or if you need to get that diagnosis, if you need medical care related to COVID, um, if you need to self-quarantine, 
if you're under a quarantine or isolation order, if there's been a public health recommendation that you should stay home, or if you're caring for someone else who is sick. Um, these are all really important reasons. I'm so glad that we have this policy. Certainly, I would like to see federal paid sick days extend it to more people and for more reasons. But in, in this time of crisis, um, it's really important to know what is out there already. Of course, this being a government program, there are some other pieces that you should know about it. Uh, one of the good ones is that you can get this time even if you're self-employed, you're a gig worker, you're an independent contractor, or a public employee. Um, this time is available to you in all of those situations. Also, you can't be required to use other time off first. So if you get some kind of PTO or paid sick days through your employer, your employer can't require you to use the time that you already have either before using the federal time or while using the federal time. However, if you work for a company of 500 people or more, this time is not available to you. Um, this is one of the loopholes that we're hoping to see closed in the next COVID package. Um, in the uh, package that came up, that was introduced in the House this week, this loophole is actually closed, so it will pass. And then finally, if you work for a, uh, an emergency responder or in the healthcare field, once again, you, your employer is the one who will decide if you have access to the time. Now, if you're employed and on the job and you need paid time from work to care for your children, um, there are also some things available to you. First of all, there is still the federal paid sick days. Um, I should have said before, if you're taking paid sick days to care for yourself, you get up to 80 hours of time at your full pay up to $511 per day. If you're using it to care for a loved one, um, you get two thirds of your pay up to $200 a day. And that's also true if you need to take care of your children who are home because school or childcare is closed. Uh, the federal government also passed paid emergency leave which is up to 12 weeks of leave, again at two thirds pay up to $200 a day. Um, and with this program, uh, you are able again to stay home and take care of your children for a much longer period of time. Uh, once again, this is available to you if you're self-employed or a gig worker, um, if you're an independent contractor or an employee, except for federal employees. Um, there, there's something regarding the FMLA that makes federal employees not able to use this time. If you work in a very large company of 500 people or more, this time is not available. Um, your employer is the one who will decide if you can use the time if you work in healthcare or as an emergency responder. And in this case only, if you work in a business of 50 people or fewer, again, your employer can make the decision. So your employer could say, this is too hard, we're too small, um, we can't afford to do this. Um, we really, again, it's a loophole that we would like to see closed. Um, when you're taking any of this time, your employers are, a, are eligible to get a tax credit in most cases to pay for the time that you're out. So this shouldn't be a burden on businesses. It is a really good way to make sure that people stay attached to the workforce um, and ready to go back to work when, when that time comes. Um, if you're employed and on the job and you've run through the federal options, we always suggest that people look at local and state paid sick days laws and paid family leave laws to see if there's anything that will work for them. You can also talk to your employer about any accommodations that might be out there to help you. And then finally, if you have to lose, leave your job, you can apply for unemployment insurance. Um, one other thing that you can do that I didn't list here, but you can certainly work to advocate to uh, find better programs for you. And I know Truth is gonna talk about that a little bit more in, in your state. I know that you all did a webinar recently on unemployment, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but I did wanna share it in case it would be helpful to you. And also because it is part of this flow chart that we put together at Family Values at Work. So if you're working less because of COVID, um, there is still unemployment insurance available. Um, if you lose some hours, some states offer just regular unemployment insurance, but the states that don't are now covered by pandemic unemployment assistance, which is part of the CARES Act that passed last month. 
Um, in either case, you're eligible, not just for the assistance itself, but for an extra $600 per week up until the week ending uh, July 26. So that is certainly some helpful additional money that's out there. Um, and I, I would definitely recommend applying for unemployment if you can. Um, your employer may also be able to talk to your state about work sharing. I didn't get a chance to take a look at Wisconsin and see. Um, I just got a message that the sound went out. Can everyone else hear me? Can I get a thumbs up from people? If... Okay, great. So hopefully that's just one person that the sound went out for. Um, anyway, you, you can check it out in Wisconsin and see if uh, you do have work sharing there. That's something that has to be determined by the employer, not by the employee, but it is another way to kind of formalize um, these you know, having less hours and come up with a way where everyone has access to both work time and benefits. Um, unfortunately, if you are uh, an undocumented worker, you don't qualify for unemployment insurance. So that's just something to keep in mind um, looking ahead to this. Again, very quickly, if you do not have a job or you don't have any more hours, there is still unemployment insurance. If you're a regular employee, you apply for unemployment through your state. Um, if you're someone who wouldn't normally apply, normally qualify for unemployment, if you are self-employed, if you are a gig worker, if you've only been working a few months and normally that's not enough time to qualify, you can still apply for pandemic unemployment assistance. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, in both cases, again, you're eligible for that additional $600 per week. Um, if you run out of regular and extended unemployment benefits under the CARES Act, there's now the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program, which will cover an additional 13 weeks of your time. And if you're self-employed or a contractor or a gig worker, as I mentioned, there's the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. Um, the payment will be at least one half of your state's regular minimum payment. Um, and it's up to 39 weeks. So this is really important for the many people who are out of work, who were not attached to the, the unemployment system before, they do now have access to um, these benefits. Again, you're eligible for the additional $600 per week here. Uh, so I know I went through this quickly, but I wanted to make sure to leave a lot of time for questions. I'm gonna turn it over to Truth right now, uh, and then I think we'll take questions at the end. So thank you all so much. Okay, thanks, Mary Ann. So we're going to switch just a little bit. I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Okay, so. <laughs> I did have a little video, but that's okay. I'm not going to show it. I'm just going to go right into my into my presentation, uh, and maybe I'll show it at the end. So, so, so wait. I think I uh, wait. Hold on. So I think Marianne has to release her screen. Okay. Oh wait. That's fine. Yep. Okay. So now I've lost it. Sorry. Go ahead, Ruth. Okay. And everyone can see this. <laughs> can't hear the video truth mm -hmm. 
We can't hear the video. You can't. Mm -mm. You can't see your oh. Is the video maybe on a different screen for sharing? Oh, okay. So you said you could not see, you can see it? We couldn't see it or hear it. Oh, you couldn't, oh my goodness. I totally thought you were seeing it. All right. Well, I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay. okay. <laughs> so uh, maybe if it's possible and there's some time at the end, I'll show it. I'm gonna ask Marianne to, show, to share her screen again where our PowerPoint is. Um, and I'm just gonna go on with the information I wanna share about the state. Of Wisconsin. Um, so the video I was trying to show was talking about uh, us asking for paid leave for all. Uh, and Mary Ann got a chance to sh share with us about what's available through the federal government. Uh, and uh, Irene already introduced me. I'm Truth Freeman. I'm one member of a great team of folks at 9 to 5 in the Wisconsin office, formerly known as 9 to 5 National Association of Working Women. Uh, and 9 to 5 has been around for almost 50 years, if you are not familiar with our organization. Uh, we're one of the largest, most respected national membership organizations of working women in the U.S. Uh, and we're dedicated to putting uh, working women uh, and our families' issues on public agendas. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie 9 to 5, ooh, that movie was about our organization. It was about a group of office workers organizing to get rid of a really bad boss. Um, and that is part of our early work. But I'm here to talk uh, specifically about paid sick leave, uh, paid sick days for all. So we have a lot of wins at nine to five. Um, and if you want to see what some of those wins are, you can check out our website and our Facebook page. What we're currently trying to win is paid sick days, FMLI, Family Medical Leave Insurance. So when I'm talking about uh, family, family leave insurance, to me, it's just like having, it's like having car insurance or renter's insurance or homeowner's insurance. Uh, it's like having health insurance. And in Wisconsin, what do we know about what is currently available and what's not available and what, is, and what are the states of families? Well, right now, we don't have paid sick, sick days and we don't have paid emergency leave offered by the state of Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, 87% of workers have no access to paid family and medical leave. And 30% of working families have incomes that are so low and or below the poverty level, that they're in absolutely no position to stay home from work if they're sick uh, and if they're not going to get a paycheck. What we also know is that no matter how often workers with no paid time off are told to stay home, uh, many of them have no choice but to show up uh, because they need to, because they need to feed their families. And because they also know that when they don't show up, uh, that they could lose their jobs, they could lose their houses, their homes, their benefits, in some cases, their families. And now in the age of COVID-19, you can lose your life. So we're talking about allowing everyone, you, all of us on this call, the opportunity to stay home when we're sick. Because what I know is that when you, ha when you don't have paid sick leave, you're more likely to go to work and, because you're not able to stay home. Uh, and so before COVID-19, uh, as anyone knows, because we've been working on this issue for years, that meant staying home if you had the flu and you don't wanna spread pink eye or you don't wanna spread a stomach flu, or you didn't want to uh, spread the regular flu. But now we're talking about more of a life and death issue when we talk about the current state. Of course, in Wisconsin, only 13% of workers have access 
to any paid family leave. And due to the eligibility gaps that Mary Ann talked about between FMLA and uh, FMLI, less than one in three workers in Wisconsin are able to access the right to any form of employment protection, whether that leave is paid or unpaid. That's 13% of workers. So what we want is for Wisconsin to be a national leader in ensuring permanent paid leave for workers. So what we want is our legislators to pass pending bills. I think there's a slide that talks a little bit about uh, the Senate bill that was introduced in November of last year. Uh, and so this bill specifically is establishing a family medical leave insurance fund and another bill that also allows workers to earn paid sick days. So let me just say here, this is especially true when we talk about women and people of color, because we are the ones that are more likely to be in lower paying jobs. And we're also the ones that are more likely uh, to have jobs that don't have any paid sick days or any time off. Women and people of color tend to be the ones that are most vulnerable when we're talking about paid sick leave, but all Wisconsin families. So we're asking for um, the swiftest possible action so that all Wisconsin families have paid sick days. So what do we believe the solution is? We believe the solution is for every person in Wisconsin statewide to have access to paid sick days. And we have come up with a strategy for how to make that possible. So we believe that if we expand the social good ordinance that nine to five and keeping family first one in Wisconsin and uh, that's pending and racing statewide, uh, that this would help incentivize the state's contractor to provide paid sick days and paid sick leaves. We would also be replicating the Obama administration's executive action that allows people to take up to six days, uh, six weeks, I'm sorry, six weeks paid time in advance, even if they haven't accrued it. And if you're someone that already has paid sick days at your job, you are part of a privileged few because most people don't. And if you, are, if you have a job where you can take sick time before you accrue it, you're also part of a privileged few. So what we're hope, what our strategy is to call for the passage of the family, uh, for the paid family medical leave insurance bill, as well as statewide paid sick days to ensure job protection and eligibility for all workers in Wisconsin. Currently, even in the federal bill, as uh, Mary Ann talked about, if you have, if you're, if you're a large company and you have more than 500 workers, then your workers aren't covered. And the gap is if you're a small employer and you have less than 50 uh, employees, they're not covered. So it's, it's, uh, it's very much a catch-22. It reminds me of the movie Jerk, which is a really old movie, which totally dates me. Uh, where there's a scene in the movie and Steve Martin is at a, at a fair trying to win a prize. And when he does win and the guy gives him instructions on where he can pick his prize, he says between here and here, even though there's this huge shelf of prizes, it's like you can only pick from here to here. So when we're talking about paid sick, it's like you can only pick, if you fit into this little margin here, then you're eligible for paid sick days. And we want to change that, uh, particularly in the state of Wisconsin, so that that doesn't apply. We want to make the solution permanent in Wisconsin uh, to get closer to some place like California, where the state does offer paid sick days. Uh, but and, and I will say, we all know this, this does come at a cost. But there is a greater cost if we don't do this if we don't provide uh, paid sick leave and uh, paid sick days for, for families. Um, 
I can go on and talk about uh, the bill that uh, we had up. One of the things I want to say is that we have found that this bill is particularly, it is pro-business and it is pro-small business, especially pro-small business. Because what we have found, uh, and we're going to at the end share some information about some of the studies, um, that when, if you have sick time, you're more likely to stay with a job. If you have paid sick days, it, in, it improves uh, employee morale. If you have paid sick times, you have money uh, because you don't lose your job to go shop at small businesses or to shop at all. Uh, so there are lots of uh, information that we can provide for you uh, to talk about, how to talk about how uh, it's good for business, it's good for families. Uh, and one of the things I talk about uh, in the presentation is how when we talk about taking time off for when you're sick, uh, if you love a man, if you have a father, a brother, a son, a cousin, an uncle, uh, we know that men are very unlikely to take a day off work if they are sick, particularly if they don't get paid for being sick. They will work themselves to death. And also us as uh, mothers, as uh, daughters and sisters, we too have been uh, conditioned that work is more important than just about anything. Uh, especially our health. And so if we, if it comes down to putting food on the table or paying our rent and going to work sick, most of us will go to work sick because we can't, we just cannot afford to stay at home. Uh, and we want to, to have Wisconsin, as I said earlier, be a model state for how we can change that. Um, and uh, I think if we go to the next slide, one of the things for, uh, for me, as a, as an activist is to always talk about what you can do for me the way to make this zoom uh webinar interactive is to have a call for action how can you get involved how can you help wisconsin be a leader in this uh and there's many many ways so one is by getting other people involved of the what of, of the 17, 19 now of us that are on this call, if you phone a friend, call night, call 10 other people that you know and share this web, webinar information, share the PowerPoint when we send it to you. Uh, we're gonna recommend some websites and some handouts. Share those with uh, the people in your network. Um, get in touch with your uh, state representatives and your, the, your, your legislators write them, email them, uh, tweet them, tell, uh, let them know that you want the uh, pending bills passed, that you want permanent solutions for sick days in Wisconsin. The other way for you to get involved, for you to make a difference is to vote, vote in August, vote in November to make sure that, uh, your boy, that you're voting for people to represent you, that are gonna vote for paid sick days uh, and vote for the health of our state. In addition to that, if you have not ever, if you've never seen the movie, Zero Weeks, how many people by a show of hands have ever seen or even heard of the movie, Zero Weeks? Okay, right, if you have not, Zero Weeks is a movie that came out a couple years ago um, and it, Although it primarily focuses on FMLA, it does do a wonderful job of really giving a foundation of the work and what has happened and what's possible. And you can watch it for free on Prime. If you have Prime, you can watch that movie for free. And if you don't have Prime, you can sign up for a seven day free trial and watch the movie. Uh, because I think it's that important and that I want everyone to see it. So the other thing is to read, read, read. Uh, I know that we are women who read. So one, the bill, I only showed you a, a few snippets from it. You can, um, and we have, the, I have the, the name of the bill there. You can easily, if you just Google the, the name of the bill, it'll come up. Get, make yourself familiar. You do not have to be an expert on this issue. I am not an expert on this issue, but I'm someone who cares deeply about uh, Wisconsin, about Wisconsin families, about women, about children. So you can, you can educate yourself so that you can feel comfortable talking about this issue. Also, uh, and we're gonna have uh, information in the PowerPoints, there are two studies uh, that we 
that we refer to, and I and I, and I'll just say, let me see if I can still see it. Um, I don't know if I can see my talking points went away for a little while, um, but there's there are two studies that we talk about uh, that will give you lots of information. We do have them in the PowerPoint. Uh, one is the one by Dr. Jody Hyman. Um, and if, if you, you, there's a link provided to show, uh, so you can access that. And then there's also a study uh, research that came out through UW La Follette, the School of Public Affairs, uh, that was uh, conducted last June. And it's the nine to five paid family and medical leave insurance report. And it has the most recent data uh, about um, what we need here in Wisconsin. Uh, and then, right, there we go. Thank you so very much. And then the other two things I think we have on the slide was what else you can do. Post information about paid leave and paid sick days on your social media. This is, this is what uh, we now call it digital organizing. This is another way to inform your friends and families and the people that you care about uh, and how they can get involved. Put it on your Facebook page. Put it on your Instagram. Uh, you want to create a, a a Pinterest board? Create a Pinterest board that's about paid sick days, and uh, and put up information about paid sick days. Uh, and those are and um, and then other way, of course, you can get involved at nine to five. Anyone on this call who is not a nine to five member or not involved, I'm inviting you now. A personal invitation to get involved to get emails, to get newsletters, so that you can stay up to date on these issues. Um, we know that there is power in our uh, collective energy, our collective work, and, our, and, our, and in our collective stories. Uh, so I, I just, I really um, invite you to do that in, uh, in any shape, show, any shape uh, fashion that makes sense for you. Uh, and then the next slide, Mary Ann, um, if I'm not mistaken, right, that's about the study. And can we go to the one after that? Yes. Hello. This is our new wonderful piece of art that is going to help it make it easier, hopefully, for you to talk about paid sick days, to talk about the CARES Act. Uh, and you can post this on your social media as well. Uh, and you can also... Um, Download it and attach it and send it out in emails to, to, uh, to the uh, women and people in your circle. This is about, this is a, a new post, uh, postcard and art and a project uh, that we're launching today. Uh, thanks to Irene and a local Wisconsin artist. Irene, please say uh, the artist's name. I'm sorry, it's, it's not in my head in this moment, if you can unmute yourself. Yeah, that's Barb Luring, who is on the call. So there she was. Uh, Hi, Barb. She's somewhere in here. Yeah, <laughs> Barb did a great job. She did a fabulous job. We love this. Uh, and what, what we know, there you are. Thank you, Barb. My is name that, is Owner. Yes, Owner. <laughs> wonderful. You are the owner. <laughs> uh, so what I want to say is that we know that we are visual beings that having uh, something that is user-friendly, that is... Uh, uh, aesthetically pleasing to the eye helps us talk about what is to many a very complicated issue to talk about. So this, I, I think this, uh, I'm calling it a postcard, but this artwork talks about Wisconsin needs permanent leave. It talks about paid sick leave and emergency paid leave. It's telling us to know our rights, to talk to your employer, uh, to go to 9to5.org if you want to find out more information. It also gives you the U.S. government's uh, uh, page where if you click on that, if you go to that website, you can find out who your representative is if you put in your address, and then you know how to get in touch with them, and you can send them this postcard and asking them to support paid leave. Uh, and then it's, it's also talking about um, just about what we need, and it's about talking about the fact that the Family First Corona Response Act does end in December 31st. I think most of us already know that what we're going through isn't going to end by then. We don't know what it's going to look like, uh, but that we need to make sure that if we are not feeling well, if we are sick, that we can stay home with our families. Uh, we, can, we can take care of our parents, our children, um, whomever, 
um, and that the way to get that done is to make make permanent changes. So I'm going to stop there because I'm uh, I want to make sure there's some room left for questions. Hey, Truth, this is Joanna. I have the video queued up. Would you like oh. me to try to play it? Yeah, it's only a minute. I would love for folks to see it. Okay, let me give it a shot. I've never done this, so we'll... <laughs> um. Oh, wrong screen. We can see, can see it, it, though. <laughs> can yeah, you yeah. see it? Yep. Okay. Now let me start playing. We'll see what happens. Yep. You should not have to choose between your life and your livelihood. No one should have to choose between your life and your job. Can you hear it? Yes. Okay. Stop. When COVID hit, nearly 32 million of us did not have access to a single paid sick day. Four out of five American workers did not have access, had no paid family leave through their job. The U.S. is the only industrialized country. We're taking time when you're sick. When a family member is ill. When you're welcoming a new child. Or comforting a dying parent it can cost you your pay or your job. Back in March, Congress passed paid family leave. And for that, we say thank you. But it left out as many as 106 million workers. It exempted big business, and it left out people who work in pharmacies, in grocery stores, healthcare workers. The people on the front lines risking their lives to keep us safe. We need paid leave to protect all of our health. And to get America working again. Call your member of Congress today. Go to paidleaveforall.org. Where you can take action. Ask for paid leave. Ask for paid leave. Ask for paid leave for all. Great. Thank you so much, jo Joanne. So this is us all asking for paid leave for all, particularly here in the state of Wisconsin, asking for paid leave for all Wisconsin workers. So. Thank you. So well, I'm going to open it up. I don't know if our, uh, Irene or someone wants to moderate questions, or or Marianne and I could do that. I guess. I think one of the one of the questions out there is, um, are we seeing specifically with COVID? Are we seeing socioeconomic demographics be a reason why um, there's see there's more of an outbreak in those areas where people can't take time off of work so they're going to work sick um you know and uh, more so in um blue collar environments and mm -hmm. and so forth so i'm gonna i want to start and anyone else who wants to wants to uh, uh, participate in the answer of this question so what i have seen from one going do, uh, doing a lot of work particularly in the communities of color and uh, low-income communities, is that the COVID is more likely to spread what, right? What we're just saying, if you have a low-wage job and you cannot stay home. Most, a lot of the essential jobs, this is what we are now, the workers that are essential are low-wage job workers, people in the grocery stores, people uh, driving trucks, people delivering packages. So, and though, and if you can't take off, and, we, and I think we we're seeing in the news, 60 Minutes has done a special almost every week that um, people are going to work, but they, they don't have protective gear. They don't have masks, they don't have gloves. Uh, and then they're interacting with their coworkers, they're interacting with the public. Um, and, and of course, what COVID-19 is extremely contagious, right? So, so they don't, they're not protected in any shape, form, or fashion. In addition to that, when we talk about social distancing at home, it is much more challenging to social distance if you live in a home with multiple people, if you live in a home with one bathroom, um, if you live in a home where there's not, where everyone can't be in a separate room, which is most of us, uh, so these are some of the some of the reasons we're seeing that. And then the other thing is when we talk about underlying health issues um, or pre-existing conditions. Unfortunately, in America, being a person of color is a pre-existing health condition. 
being being a person of color, being uh, black or brown is a in, in itself is a pre-existing condition. So that's that's some of what we're seeing. Anyone else who wants to add to that, please do. Okay. Does that help, Joanne? Did that? Did that? Yeah. Even... I mean, it makes it makes total sense um, because Becca was saying, well, people down in Racine, um, there seems to be a, a much greater impact of COVID because people are having to go to work, and Racine um, is more industrial. It's more blue collar mm -hmm. than say you know, the Appleton area. Mm -hmm. And I know, and, uh, I know Diana, I see, I knew you, Diana, who lives <laughs> in Racine, uh, but what I'm going to say, and the other, the other part of that is what we're seeing is that uh, up until last week, when, when uh, and I'll just say, in, in where I live in Milwaukee, where there is now more testing available, up until last week, now we've been in quarantine since March, so uh, almost two months in, eight weeks, you, it was very difficult to get a test, even if you were sick. We talked to many, many, many women in particular, stories, who were sick, who had all the symptoms, who even, and they were not able to get a test. Right. So then they're spreading it. You didn't even know you were, so, and, and then they were spreading it to their family members. Diana, did you quickly want to say something to that? Um, yes, real quick, is that, it's not even the work, just the workplace or being forced to go to work. It's also our responsibility to take this seriously. We had um, several discussions with many people about how serious this is. If I was sick and I still went out to the grocery store, I still went out to the, um, or I went to work, like somebody said, well, I had to go to work. I don't know how to make money without going to work. And um, my boss told me I needed to be there. They broke the quarantine. They broke, they went in 10 days before they were supposed to and got the rest of the people sick. So Racine, you're not getting all the facts. Um, there's a lot of miscommunication about the reason why it's spreading quickly, but it is amongst the same group of people um, we can almost pinpoint if they're from a certain uh, relationship or certain town, like we call it, a certain town um, that's spreading. We're contact tracing. Somehow connected with those people, it's spreading. I uh, just got off the phone before this with a person that just because he was um, uh, in, in connection with them, he's got to be quarantined for, for uh, 14 days. They're not allowing him to get a test. He just has to be in. He's fine, but he still has to be quarantined for 14 days. Thank you, Diane. So it gets upsetting, but you got to. If you want to save lives. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions or thoughts? Or I think one of the things too that. Oh, sorry, Shirley. Did you want to say something? No. Maybe I not. Like she's just it, cleaning her screen. Pretty, yep. Oh, okay. I was going to say unmute Shirley if you wanted to. Maybe yeah, was... I, I, we need to mute that. I think, um, you know, as awful as this whole COVID-19 situation is, it's raising the awareness for issues like paid leave. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we have to, I don't want to say thank God for COVID-19, but do you understand what I'm saying? That this is one of the positive ripple effects that we can take on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, strike why the iron's hot, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So be better. Yep, that be is better when it's at, well, past this when Be better. Mm -hmm. Joanna, Joanna? Uh, that's exactly what I wanted to say. Okay. That people who don't understand the need for paid sick leave can really understand it right. with COVID-19. And, and it would be a great way uh, to use this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the important, there's multiple positive ripple effects from this that if we 
don't use them, mm -hmm. then shame on us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then shame on us. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of work for us to do. Yeah. Marianne, did you want to add anything? No, I mean, I, I think that's exactly right. I put in the chat a link to uh, the press release about Dr. Hyman's uh, study. And one of the things that she pointed out is that people without paid sick time are one and a half times more likely to work while they're contagious. Right. Um, and, you know, I was in, I was working on paid sick days 10 years ago when H1N1 hit. And there was a study that came out afterwards talking about the millions of people who got infected with that in the workplace because people didn't have paid sick days. Mm. Um, so, you know, it was not, H1N1 was a different thing as far as how it affected people. But um, we, we know that this happens, that when, when you're not able to stay home from work, um, you are likely to spread something to your coworkers. And really, would it, uh, and maybe you know this because I'm coming in rather fresh on this, but it is an economic issue for businesses when people who are sick go and make other people sick. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, it absolutely is. So certainly when they, when they go to work sick and other people get sick because of it, that's an economic issue. Also, I mean, all of us know it, we could just have a cold but you're not operating at 100%. Mm -hmm. And so you're not getting as much work done. Um, and it, it's called presenteeism. Um, and it's actually been shown that, that businesses lose more by having people come in sick yes. than they would if they could just give them time to recover. Well, and your, your recovery time is longer if you're pushing yourself to work. Yes. You know, right. So. So you, and it's like they lose, they lose money because other people get sick, but they also lose money because you're less productive when you're at right. work and you're so sick, you can barely stand, you know, so right. it's good for business. And we have to really hold up that, that it's good for small business and it's good for business uh, because that will make a, that will help make a difference. Yes, Becca. I just uh, did a temp position at a, a fairly well-known Midwestern company and I was in the HR department and we were hearing a lot from the floor workers in the retail stores who were terrified. And this was back at the beginning and they were like, where's the sanitizer? Where are the masks? What are you gonna send us stuff? And I just saw a post in my neighborhood group on Facebook that someone had been to that store and was commenting that none of the employees had any PPE. And it's just that company's uh, perspective on it was very, I don't even know what words to use. It was shocking to me. And this is a company that gives people points every time they're late, every mm. time they're late back from break, for God's sake. Oh, if there's any kind of anything, you get a point. And once you get to a certain number of points, you're out. You're That's, out. I can't even imagine working under that. And these employees who were concerned were employees in their 60s and 70s. It was not, you know, the teenagers. It was the workers who had been there for 30 years and were like, how are you going to help us with this? And the company mm -hmm. was like, hey, we put sanitizers in all the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I want to offer Linda and Irene, did you want to add anything? Um, yeah, thanks. I just wanted to say what an important point it is to raise about businesses also being really concerned, um, not just about COVID-19, but about uh, you know, having folks, uh, giving folks the ability to take off, and, and that is an expense to the business, both, you know, uh, in terms of the bottom line, but also in terms of, um, um, you know, maintaining its workforce, and, and so what can we do to help, help it be a win-win situation, <laughs> and so in Wisconsin, you know, there are a couple of things, right, we're talking about legislation, but we're also talking about um, other ways to work with the governor's office on um, exploring executive actions to make what is available right now to businesses and to employees more um, permanent long term because we know COVID-19 is here to stay for some time. We don't know if it'll be a couple more months, it'll be a couple more years, but what we do know is that the new normal that we are going to have to go back to can't look the same as it did before. Um, and so the voices that we also need to be part of the Key Families First Coalition and to you know, advocate for these types of policies are from business owners. So, you know, figuring out how do we build that advocacy as well um, from the business owner's voice 
um, because we know that the WMC and MMAC don't speak for all businesses. But yet, when we hear, you know, about business opposition in the paper, it's almost or anywhere, it's almost like they do. Um, so whatever we can do, um, you know, as, as part of this coalition to be able to lift those other voices as well is going to be very important. And I'm sorry if my grandchildren over. <laughs> so, oh. Um, they're playing hide and seek in the background. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you so much. Um, this is really great. Um, and and uh, I just want to mention, um, Truth, thank you for running through that long list of actions we can take. Um, I've been representing Midday Women's Alliance on the Keeping Families First Coalition for um, eight years, seven or eight years now. Um, and if you watch the zero weeks video, there's a small clip me testifying in front of the Senate committee hearing, um, representing Midday Women's Alliance and mm -hmm. telling the senators they need to do this because business needs it as mm -hmm. well as families and women. Um, and so Midday Women's Alliance being a, this women's organization is prime to get involved, um, not just as an organization, but each one of us. So um, that's, that's why Nine to Five has reached out at this particular point in time to partner with us uh, to get this get this bill um, past the finish line. Um, many people don't know that Nine to Five was the leader in getting unpaid family and medical leave passed here in Wisconsin and in Washington D.C. So. Um, this is the right coalition to be be part of, and uh, you'll be hearing me talk more about it uh, in the future, actually, for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are a little past the top of the yes. hour, so I, I want to be respectful of people's time. Um, I posted the link to the Midday Women's Alliance Facebook page. So if you go out there and like it, um, you know, you'll be able to receive and then ads to have, to follow it and get notifications. We're, we're gonna post the video, we'll post, you know, with the websites, the, the infographic, all that for everybody that um, is not only on this call, but, but for others. And then that's also a place, um, we're doing another event like this next um, Thursday, where the focus is going to be on, okay, we're all in this chaos. It's upset our apple carts. How do mm -hmm. we figure out who the new me is gonna be? Yeah. So, and mm -hmm. how do we come out of this better as individual people? So hopefully we'll see some of your faces there. Hopefully, yes. Yes, but very appreciative, Truth, Marianne, Irene, everybody that pulled this together. Yeah, really. You. Bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Yeah. And also, Mar Marianne is going to make sure everyone gets the PowerPoint. She's going to take care of that in the next couple of days. Irene can send it out to everyone that was registered. Thank you, that Truth. That sounds awesome. Thank you. I, I will be sharing it with as many friends as I have that I right. there's that that aren't on right now. That's good. So thank, thank you, you Joanne. Right. Thank we you. We have to strike while the iron's hot. That's right. <laughs> Let's get to it. Thanks, Marianne. Right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you, thank you so much Truth for having me. Thanks. Yeah.